Good morning everyone, welcome to a bit of a bonus video. We're doing the three uh, ser the three uh, videos in the run-up to Christmas on the Battle of Waterloo, uh, the uh, attack by Dar, the uh, cavalry attacks by Ney, and the final Old Guard cavalry assault. And uh, the first one of those is already up on YouTube. But uh, this morning, it's absolutely miserable outside. It's pouring with rain. Um, I've uh, um, well ahead of where I need to be on my work, so I've got some time free this morning. And um, I thought we'd throw in a, a bonus game. So this is a scenario that I have played once before on the channel. Uh, this is the French Assaults on Papillot. So this complements nicely the Dal Assault and reflects Durette's division uh, on the uh, eastern flank, eastern flank of, of that assault, uh, going against the Nassau, uh, the second, I think it is, Nassau Regiment, and the 28th Orange Nassau Regiment, both part of the Dutch 2nd Division 2nd Brigade under Perponchet. Uh, their defence of La Haye uh, um, uh, Papayot uh, Frichemont, I think, um, uh, and uh, how they um, how they drove back the French attacks during the course of the day. We may also have some Prussian reinforcements uh, arriving on the game table towards the uh, end of the game. We'll probably do this game in uh, a couple of waves as the French attacks weren't relentless all day, but uh, came on with Derlon, came on later, and then there was a final assault about the time of the old guard attack with the Prussians arriving. So we might well do this in uh, in uh, in three uh, in a series of uh, three waves, as it were. All right. Um, some other comments and questions we've had. Um, a number of people have asked me where we get uh, where I get the game mats from. Uh, and these are absolutely fabulous games, Matt. Um, I hope don't clearly don't get any sponsorship or anything for anything. Um, but I really, really do like these. They're from Cigar Got Box Battles uh, in the US. There is a website out there. Um, they're uh, they are a bit expensive because you have to pay quite substantial shipping costs and sometimes import duty to bring them in. They used to be sold by North Star in the UK, um, but. Uh, North Star seem to have stopped stocking them since the COVID crisis started, and perhaps because of the increased shipping costs. Anyway, I thoroughly recommend them. I think they're great. They are really, there's a really large selection, of which a whole lot are suitable for historic wargaming. And these ones of the fields with the uh, tracks on them, I think, are particularly visually uh, uh, great to play on. And the, the material they use is actually quite flexible. Um, there's a lot of give in it, so when you lay it over hills, it really doesn't create any ripples on the table uh, and seamlessly goes up and down. For the videos, that makes the, perhaps the hills not um, overly visible, except when troops are going up or down on them. Uh, but as, if we just uh, take a look over here, we've got some of my Nassau here. And here we go. Uh, we've got the Nassau formed up uh, behind the central line. Uh, and then we actually have a hill, uh, which you can't really see. Perhaps you can just see if I look that way. You can see the artillery battery in the distance is at a higher elevation than the trees. The, the mat's gone up and down over those hills. There's actually two different hills there with a little gap between them where they're butting up against one another. And you can see there's no ripples or creases in the mats at all. And they do, they do stretch and form uh, really, really well over stuff lying underneath them. So you just give them a bit of a... Uh, a brush down with your hand and uh, you get perfect pl uh, play surface to play on. They're also a bit felty, so the figures don't slip on them either, which is good. The other reason for playing this game today is my uh, other new acquisition. So I ordered this about four months ago, um, but I ordered the Palpet Papillot Farm Complex uh, from Hovels. Uh, they do uh, some fabulous models. Uh, and uh, <coughs> here's one of Papillot. Uh, that's just arrived. I've got La Hisson, as you've seen in the Long video, but that's such a well-known farm. Um, I always uh, slightly struggled using that in uh, other scenarios, whereas Papillot, not really so well-known, not such a uh, an obvious uh, floor plan. So uh, my intention is to use this uh, in other games as well that aren't necessarily Waterloo-based uh, or uh, fictional scenarios, um, or indeed for <coughs> the Gemincor farm at, at Quatre Bras. Um, anyway, so enough about the scenery and the, the trees and stuff I'm sure you'll recognise as. Uh, I always get confused, is it Lost Valley or Lost Valley? Lost Valley, I think. Uh, picked up from game shows uh, in the past. And then finally, um, we've got uh, some uh, uh, small number of buildings here representing the edge of the village of La Haye. Uh, and they're from, I think it's Conflicts. Uh, they did go out of production, but um, I have seen them back up on the web and in certain game stores again. So. I think that's the right name. So anyway, if you hunt around, 
you will be able to find uh, uh, those. They're sort of 20 or 30 pounds each. Uh, a bit more, <laughs> a bit cheaper than the Pape Op Farm buildings were. All right, uh, let's have a look at what we've got for the game today. So we're kicking off with uh, Nassau and Defence. So we have, um, I'm actually going to play it as two brigades because it's a big table and just to get the command and control under uh, General Darmé to work right, I'm going to give them two commanders. So we have Perponche himself, uh, who is the overall brigade commander uh, and will be uh, taking command of my two Nassau battalions. They were formed up um, from a British perspective to the right of Papayot and joined up with the flank of uh, the British 5th Division. When we look across to Papayot itself, we've got a small number of Nassauers. I think uh, from my reading of the various different sources, there are only a company or two uh, in occupation. So I've put the uh, Nassau Jaegers, who were uh, brigaded with the 28th Orange Nassau, into Papayot Farm itself. We've got some hedge lines which are uh, currently um, the home of some Nassau light infantry. And then we've got the two battalions of the 28th Orange Nassau Regiment. These ones were very much uniformed in the French style, I think still with French equipment and French muskets. Uh, so they weren't in the green of Nassau, they were uh, more in the blue of the Dutch Belgians, but definitely French style, just with what I can see is slightly different um, decorations on their shako. Here they are, occupying the farm, those two Italians. They're Perry Plastics, uh, they are some of the old Mexicans I talk about in the past, uh, and these ones were straight French, uh, that pretty much simply reflagged and just uh, touched up uh, a couple of the uh, highlight colours. And then facing off against them we've got Jurets, I hope I pronounced that right. Division, we've got eight battalions attacking. We've only got seven on the table at the moment. The eighth battalion will come on uh, in that gap there uh, as the rest of the, the two brigades move forward. And they're supported by uh, the horse artillery from uh, the French Light Cavalry. Is it Pirates French Light the Cavalry Division? Um, that perform the flank attack um, against Dermont. So, uh, in terms of timing, Dermont's attack is going in. Um, as you've watched uh, that video, you'll see that the French do better in my game uh, than they did in history, and the British Heavy Cavalry did not break through the French lines. So we're not going to have the Scots Greys coming onto the flank of this table as we played it last time, so to keep the continuity going with the previous game. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the bonus video. We'll get on with the game, starting with turn one. All right, kicking off first with our artillery fire. We'll do some, uh, we traditionally do some approach fire. So we'll do a couple of turns of artillery fire, re reflecting the ground battery, opening up before uh, the brigades reach the table edge. So I'll just go and do that firing and come back with the results in a second. Okay, so it's taken uh, four, it took three turns of uh, pre-artillery bombardment uh, and both French brigades went hesitant in their approach marches. So. Uh, we're now just about to start turn five. The French brigades have just reached the table edge, um, having overcome their hesitant rolls, and we'll be rolling for ADCs in the first turn. Charlie's given his orders. He wants to hold and then uh, pull back his left flank in La Haye uh, towards the main farm buildings in Papayot if they come under French pressure, and otherwise just try and hold the uh, French off using the hedge lines and artillery fire to try and keep them away from his Nassau defenders and the farm complex itself. Okay, so let's roll off. Both sides got two brigades and uh, we'll see uh, who's got active ADCs. Okay, so both have two active ADCs. We'll have a think about how to employ them. So the Allies are going for rerolls? Uh, re are they going to go for rerolls? Actually, I think we'll go for artillery assault. So we'll go for artillery assault, starting with the Nassau, uh, but no reroll available on this. They get artillery assault off. Uh, from uh, the battery on the hill. All right, and then for the uh, 28th, they are active as well. So both allied brigades are active. Then for the French, we've gone for infantry assault on our right-hand brigade, so we'll roll for that one. That goes off, and then our other brigade is also active. Okay, everyone's active. We'll now roll for initiative. Straight roll off, as no one's got any hesitant brigades. 
the Allies have initiative and we'll start turn five. Okay, so as we go into turn five, no movement from the Allies and the two French brigades are now starting to move forward, starting to pressurise this first French hedge, uh, uh, first hedge line held by the Nassau skirmishers uh, with our own skirmish screen and we're starting to move out towards La Haye village uh, and a potential flanking attack on Papayot farm as well. All right, we'll do some firing, uh, just uh, skirmish of fire to start with, and then we'll come back and do the artillery. Okay, so this is the Dutch-Belgian uh, foot artillery battery on the hill there, opening fire um, against the uh, French tank, but at this stage, the French are still a long way distance and uh, through a hedge screen and their own skirmishers. So they're gonna continue the counter battery fire against the French artillery battery on the hill. So this is at long range and minus two. Uh, are on five, minus two is three, that will be no effect against the French artillery battery. French are going to continue to fire at the, um, the Nassau, I think they might open fire now at the Dutch artillery. Um, they've taken a couple of casualties from Dutch counter battery fire and they've caused quite a few casualties against the Nassau and uh, they don't have an intrusion column actually going against that battalion at the moment. So uh, we'll start some counter battery fire of our own. Okay, so that's a four at long range is no effect. Okay, that's it for turn five. We'll start turn six and ADCs. Let's roll for the British and the French. Two ADCs each. French get no ADCs, the Allies get two. All right, so the Allies will go for, uh, they did have artillery assault, didn't they? I, uh, I forgot to put the counter down. So they did have artillery assault at uh, that battery on the hill. So we'll roll the two dice for the artillery assault. It didn't actually cause any casualties. All right, now um, we'll go again for artillery assault on the Nassau battalion up on the hill. So let's roll for them. Doesn't go off, and then activation for the other brigade. Yep, the orange Nassau are active. And for the French, the fire brigade. Both brigades are hesitant, so we're not going to see a lot of movement in turn six. Okay, rolling for initiative and then for artillery fire. Uh, initiative goes to the French. So they will continue with their counter battery fire at this stage against the Dutch on the hill. Ah, double six. So that will be a destiny test. And it's three casualties. You reduce that by two, it takes it to ten. So that's um, two casualties and a discipline test on the Dutch artillery battery on the hill. Okay, rolling the discipline test first. That's a five, so the artillery goes unformed. And then rolling the destiny test is a five. Uh, that's recover one casualty for the French artillery battery. All right, that was eventful. Okay, so the Dutch will return uh, fire and also do counter battery fire at long range. Ah, another great roll. That's a 10, uh, minus two becomes an eight. At long range, I think will be just one casualty against the uh, French horse artillery battery on the hill here. Indeed, one casualty against this horse artillery battery. All right, we'll mark that out. Okay, in turn seven, uh, again, the French are hesitant. Uh, clearly only having two brigades and two ADCs is significantly making the attack more difficult to mobilize, uh, and that will mean no long range artillery fire this turn. Both Allied Brigades are active and uh, they've gone uh, for artillery assault again. Uh, so they will continue their counter battery fire against the French. All right, we'll do French uh, movement as I don't think the Allies are gonna move. And then I'll come back uh, with firing. Okay, I was uh, just rolling away for skirmisher fire and uh, not very much had happened. A couple of casualties against the screens uh, and the French battalions, as you can see, are now deploying to assault the Hay and starting their approach march to Papayot on the right flank. Uh, and I've just rolled for the British artillery fire. And unfortunately, I did it off camera, but I have rolled a double six. So again, against deployed artillery, that will be a 10. So that'll be two casualties on the French and a discipline test. And this discipline test will be at minus one because they're now at four casualties. So they go unformed. Okay, so on turn eight, again, the French assault is stuttering. The right-hand brigade has now gone hesitant. The left-hand brigade, which does have uh, uh, the artillery attached to it, uh, although it is unformed, 
has uh, has gone active. Um, for their allies, their artillery battery this turn is hesitant, but the Dutch uh, Orange Nassau are uh, active this turn. Rolling for initiative. Both both sides are on minus one. Uh, the allies have initiative in turn eight. Okay, so the allies will fire first. First, their skirmisher screen uh, now does have an opportunity to fire at the attacking French column as the French skirmishers have pulled back to give the columns room to advance um, while still being able to maintain their own fire against the Nassau skirmishers. So we'll do the Nassau skirmisher screen against the uh, right hand of the uh, attacking French columns here. That's uh, one casualty on the French. Put that down for a second. All right, and then the French skirmishers will fire back. Uh, only two dice, because they're firing at a uh, unit in skirmish formation. They don't do any casualties. All right, uh, the uh, allies are hesitant, so their artillery can't fire, and the French artillery will have to form up this turn. So uh, I don't believe it will be firing, or it w if it would be, it would be a penalty, uh, and we don't want to do that. Then we've got the skirmisher screens on the other side, firing at one another. So, um, two shots from the French into La Haye, one casualty, and, uh, um, and that's it. And then for the Allies, firing at the French skirmisher screen, no casualties. All right, we'll just go and mark those casualties up. Okay, so turn nine, both Allied brigades are hesitant, uh, and unfortunately the left-hand French brigade is hesitant this turn. I've been incredibly unlucky on my activation rolls. But the brigade with infantry assault is active, so we will see some charges going in by the French against La Haye and uh, continuing to approach towards Papillot Farm itself. At last, the action is starting to hot up. Okay, so quite a lot of movement this turn. So the uh, Dutch in La Haye uh, remain in the village, but we have an attacking French column that's, uh, that's charged up to the village with a second in support. The other two French columns are bypassing La Haye and moving towards Papillot. Their skirmish is green thrown out in front, uh, ready to start confronting this second battalion of uh, Orange Nassau, who are formed in line uh, on the flank of the village. Uh, meanwhile, the um, Nassau Jaegers, who are forming that uh, defence against that uh, hedge line in front of the village, uh, have had to fall back as the British, uh, sorry, it's the French column approach, so they've fallen back into the farm itself. Um, over on the French left flank, their columns remain as they were, as the brigade was hesitant. But we've got uh, the Nassau uh, skirmishers, which we can just see through the hedge line. They've pulled back. They've pulled back from the hedge line so they can continue to harass the French, uh, but avoid the risk of being charged themselves. All right, no artillery fire this turn as both uh, artillery batteries were hesitant and are at long range, so they can't do uh, long range fire when hesitant. And we'll move on with uh, defensive fire from the village and then this combat. Okay, let's do the defensive fire against the attacking French battalion by the 28th, three shots. One casualty on the attacking French battalion. That won't do anything to slow them down. Put that on, on there and then come back uh, and they will charge in. So there's no there's no charge resolution when you're charging into a village. Uh, we go straight on to melee. Okay, so this is going to be a tough one for the French. The Allies get six dice because they're a large battalion. Uh, but they only cause one casualty. The French only get four dice because they're attacking a built-up area and they get no casualties. All right, we can go on and I think fight a second round. The French will throw their second battalion in. Okay, with a second turn of combat, odds should favor the French now. They get 10 dice because they've got two battalions attacking. And uh, that's a much better roll. That's six casualties against the Allies. Allies get six dice because they're still a large battalion. And again, uh, they get a terrible roll right last time. So they only cause one casualty and lose by five. La Haye has fallen to the French. It's a tough one for the Allies on, on this flank. The French have now occupied La Haye. 
they're unformed as they've moved into a built-up area. Uh, but I've only taken a small number of casualties. This Orange Nassau Battalion's now taken nine casualties, not in a good way. And unfortunately, its supporting battalion was um, not in sufficiently close range for it to be able to form up behind it. So there's a real possibility the French can wipe that battalion out by charging it with one of their formed battalions uh, in turn 10. All right, uh, things looking not so good on this left flank for the, for the Dutch Belgians. On we go with turn 10. Okay, not right, great rolling for the French. The left hand brigade has gone hesitant again. I keep trying to get infantry assault on it, which I need two ADCs for. And only having two brigadiers, I've only got two ADCs on table. I probably should have given each side a third ADC. We might do that for the second half of the game when the Prussians arrive. Um, and uh, as a result, uh, trying to get infantry assault off, they have failed. The right hand brigade, uh, though fortunately for the French, has gone active. The Allies only got one ADC and they've allocated it for the falter test for a re-roll on the falter test of the 28th Orange Nassau. Let's roll that now and see how they do. They get a six. They obey orders. That's good news for the Orange Nassau. They're not a complete write-off at this stage. Okay, I didn't check. I didn't get that quite right. I've just checked in the rules. This Dutch Belgian uh, routing battalion, uh, the one uh, this front line here, uh, they <coughs> they got an obeyed orders result. Now, actually, um, if you're routing, unless you get obeyed orders, uh, if you don't have a unit within 18 inches, you disperse. Um, so uh, these ones uh, did fall back. Uh, they are uh, they fell back that 18 inch retire move or route move rather. And they did end up within three inches of a friendly unit. If you are within three, you don't have to be behind them, you just only have to be within three. You then form up and you form up behind your supporting unit. So this set of Dutch Belgians actually form up to the rear of their supporting colleagues. So that's a better formation for the Dutch Belgian. That means the heavily damaged battalion in the front is now uh, actually in the rear of that formation and the stronger one is to the fore. Okay, so they got an obey order, so they can form up, they can form up in line, and they do so within three inches. So uh, there we go, that's a better defensive formation for the uh, Allies, uh, and we don't actually lose that second battalion. Do love the Nassau flags. Very nice. All right, that's the view for them as they look out on their opponents uh, moving forward behind their skirmish screen to the flank of Palpayot farm which if you look through the trees either Dutch can just see through the woods and that's now currently garrisoned by the large troop by the Nassau Jaeger detachment the light troops uh, of the 28th okay so that's it for the end of turn nine we'll move on with uh, movement for turn 10. Okay, so both artillery brigades are hesitant, or artillery batteries, so there'll be no movement on that flank. Uh, we'll do skirmisher fire exchanges uh, across the hedge line. So two shots for the French, don't do any casualties, and then two shots back from the Nassau, which don't do any casualties, no great effect there. Okay, we'll move across the other side. So we've got a volley from the uh, Dutch Belgians, they're reservists, so as long as they've got less than four casualties, they fire as a standard battalion. So they'll fire a volley, they'll fire a volley through the French skirmish screen uh, over in the distance over there, but the French skirmish screen is in within one inch of, of their screening battalion. Um, so they will simply take one of the casualties and the rest will flow through to the battalion behind. All right, so firing a volley from the Dutch. They get a nine, that's a pretty good roll for a standard volley. Is three casualties and a discipline test. So that'll be one on the skirmish screen and two on the battalion behind and a discipline test. Okay, and then we'll also do some fire against the other battalion from the skirmishers in the village. Uh, so that'll be three shots. Uh, sorry, two, sh two shots. Should only be two shots because it's only a small battalion actually occupying Papayot. We roll a six, so that's one more casualty against the other French battalion. But no, uh, obviously no discipline test. We will do the discipline test uh, on the French battalion. Suffered no casualties so far, so this will be a straight roll. And they get a seven, so they're fine. All right, I'll go and mark up the casualties. 
Okay, so the French did some return fire from their skirmish screen and did actually cause two casualties in return against the uh, Nassau. Okay, now let's roll for initiative on turn 11, or ADCs rather. British get no ADCs, French get two. The French again will try and get infantry assault off on this brigade. Um, I do wonder whether it's worth it actually. I think we might just go for re-rolls on both French brigades. Uh, try and get this one moving. All right. So the far French brigade needs its reroll, is hesitant, oh, that's unfortunate. And then this brigade with its reroll is active. So we have one active French brigade. And for the Dutch Belgians, the Nassau, our 28th that is, are active. And then the main Nassau regiment is also active. So the French are at minus one. And the British allies uh, get. Initiative. Right, on we go with turn 11. Okay, so the French left-hand brigade has started to move through the hedge line with a view to uh, starting to engage those Nassau in the far distance as we look across the Papillot farm complex. The brigade here was hesitant, um, so I will have to put those skirmishers back. I moved them forward, I shouldn't have. I did deploy the main battalion uh, into line. Uh, I will want to pull the skirmisher screen away, but it can't actually advance. And the other battalion has lined itself up for assault on Papiot Farm next turn. And the villages and the battalions in La Haye remain there. All right, so I'll just reposition those and then we'll get on with firing in turn 11. So the Allies with initiative will fire first here. So the uh, 28th, I've just dropped all my dice. The 28th uh, will open fire against the French attacking battalion. Okay, let's see what they get. They get a five for a standard volley, won't be very much. That's one casualty against the French. All right, and then the uh, garrison of Papillot will open fire against the other French battalion. Uh, they get three dice, so I'll have to roll these. That's two more casualties attacking against the attacking French column. And then the uh, Nassau skirmishers will open up against the French skirmish screen in the distance over here. Uh, that'll only be two dice, and that's no casualties. All right, we'll do the French return fire. French skirmish screen against the Nassau skirmishers. One casualty. Then the French skirmishers against La Haye. No casualties. The French Column will be an inferior volley at half effect against Papayot. We'll do that. We get an eight. Um, okay, so we halve casualties if we're in column and we're firing at a strong bright side. Just question whether we quarter casualties. Uh, let's have a look anyway, see what we've got. They did move, so it would be an inferior volley. Eight would only be one, and halving that makes it uh, less than one. So we'll say no effect for that far against uh, um, against Papayot. And then we will do an inferior volley against uh, the 28th Orange Nassau down here. Two, a three, they'll lose far discipline. That'll be uh, it for the French. Okay, turn 12, and the Allies uh, won initiative. Uh, they've got artillery assault off on their uh, Dutch battery on the hill, and uh, all brigades on both sides are active. So we'll move on with charges in turn 12. Okay, so the French have charged uh, in line against the Nassau battalion. They should have stopped three inches away, they're more like an inch away, but uh, uh, we'll leave that there and we'll do a defensive volley by the Allies. This will be uh, a standard volley. Um, uh, and any adjustments? They're not a large battalion, that one's just a regular battalion. Uh, they're not unformed, they've not caused or had any casualties. All right, so they get a five, that's not great. That's one casualty on the attacking French line. All right, and then we'll do a defensive volley by the farm. That's only a small battalion, so it'll only be uh, two dice against the attacking French column, but it does cause a casualty against them. So both attacking French columns are on minus four casualties, so that will 
uh, impact their uh, charge results. Um, the one that obviously against the farm just goes in because you just go straight to assault with built up areas. They'll do with the charge result against the Dutch Belgian uh, 28th Orange Nassau line. Okay, so uh, the <coughs> combat here is a straight roll off. The French getting the benefit of having their general attached, uh, but uh, losing one for having four casualties. Okay, that looks pretty good for the French. So they rolled a nine, uh, and the uh, Dutch Belgians have rolled a three, so they've won by six. Uh, attacker victory, defender routes, and takes one d6 casualties. Let's uh, just see what those allied casualties are. They have five casualties, that's not great. Uh, we'll go and apply that result. Okay, so uh, the good news for the Dutch Belgians was their supporting unit was there, so the routing unit didn't route off table but has fallen back behind its support. Um, however, the French have charged on, they rolled a seven inch distance, and it's about six inches to the supporting Dutch Belgian line who are unformed. So they charged on into the second Dutch Belgian line. They were the ones already on nine casualties. Uh, the second battalion is also now on seven, having taken five from the route move. So this will be a tough uh, charge results for the Dutch to stand up to, and the chance for the French to break this flank of the Allied defence. Okay, so we'll do a defensive volley. Uh, I think you get one. Um, as the Dutch Belgians are charged, they are unformed, so that will be an inferior volley, and they've also suffered a lot of casualties. So. Uh, a four, that'll be nothing. Uh, so no impact from that. We'll now do the charge result. Okay, things are looking very good for the French. They will get a plus five in this die roll uh, because the Dutch Belgian 28th have already taken nine casualties, so that's a minus two. They're unformed, that's minus two. Um, the Allies are charging on, they've got their general attached, uh, but they have suffered, sorry, the French uh, are charging on, have their general attached. But they have suffered four casualties, so a net four, net five to the French. Wow, they might need it. That makes it uh, four plus five is nine against nine. So infantry versus infantry. Uh, the attacker actually will volley, so they don't charge home. That was uh, um, very lucky for the Dutch. They get to do a three dice volley. That's one more casualties on the Dutch Belgians. I think they might go as they now count as reservists. Sorry, they are of a reservist, so um, having had nine casualties, they have now degraded their status and count as recruits. Um, that actually is a large battalion, that one. Um, that's got seven bases as opposed to the one with six behind it. So it doesn't actually dissolve. Uh, it stays on 10 casualties, uh, which would be the dissolution point for a standard battalion. But uh, doesn't look like either of those two Dutch battalions have much, uh, much left in them. The French are looking uh, well positioned here. We'll move on to uh, normal firing. Okay, so we'll uh, start with the uh, French uh, skirmishers against Papayot. They do no casualties, and the French skirmishers against the Nassau screen do no casualties. Uh, sorry, do one casualty, but we do have to do movement. So we'll take that back. Uh, we will we'll do the firing from Papayot. Oh no, they fired in defence. So we will do the left hand brigades. We hadn't done the movement for that. So we will do the movement and then we will redo the skirmish fire. So a quick recap where we are at the end of turn 12. So the first phase of the battle will simply run on to turn 16, after which point Dernalon's assault has been pushed back and uh, any of Durette's uh, columns that are still in attack mode will start. Uh, withdrawing as the rest of the French line withdraws and the British cavalry, cavalry counter-attack attack start. So here we are on turn 12 and the left-hand brigade has now broken three of the hedge line and starting to advance up towards the Nassau lines on the hill. The French will uh, need to do their melee attack at the end of turn 12. We haven't completed that uh, as they try and get into Papayot. And then on the far right flank, the other French battalion has got that orange Nassau in a very weak position uh, uh, on the right. Okay, just rolling for the melee. The allies get four dice. Uh, five but normally, but minus one because they're a small battalion. That's uh, one casualty. And the French get three dice. Uh, normally five, but minus one for a built-up area and minus one for four casualties. And they get no casualties. So the French 
will be pushed back. All right, turn 13, and the Allies have initiative. The French left-hand brigade has again gone hesitant. It obviously knows that something untoward is happening on its left flank. Uh, the French will probably use the rest of turn 13 to try and remarshal their forces for a new assault on Papillot, and uh, we'll get on with uh, charges and movement. Uh, I don't think there'll be any charges, so I'll be on with Allied movement in turn 13. The French have thought about that and decided that they are going to have another go at assaulting. The French are in a much stronger position than these Dutch battalions opposing them. And they do want to try and break through and destroy this brigade. Might cause the uh, Pape or Garrison to uh, falter as well, so that would be a great side effect. Right, so the French are charging, so there'll be a defensive volley from the uh, NASA. Okay, so the NASA volley will get minus four for uh, being um, unformed. Uh, and uh, 10 casualties, and it'll be an inferior volley as well being recruited. So that'll be nothing. On we go with the charge result. Okay, so the French will be at plus four. Let's roll for the charge. See if they can do better than last time. Ah, uh, well, the uh, French uh, do pretty well, um, and the Allies do get a re-roll, which uh, I didn't do last time. Um, they were routing, so they probably didn't provide a re-roll. Um, this time... Yeah, I don't know whether I got that right in the earlier melee. Apologies if I forgot to do my re-rolls. On this time, they have got an unformed battalion to their rear. They could do a re-roll at minus one, but that won't get them any better result than a five. So the Allies will stay on 11. The French are on a nine, but they get plus four, so that takes them up to 13. So the French will win the charge by two. So that means they will melee with a LAN, and the defender will melee unformed, which they already are. So they'll move on to the combat phase. Skirmisher fire continues, the uh, Dutch battery gets another go at the French at long range, playing against a column, uh, but that makes no difference until they're at effective range. Wow, that's pretty good, that's an 11, even at long range that's pretty good, that's two casualties and a discipline test, we'll roll the discipline test. Closest battalion will now be on three casualties, so that will make no adjustment to the roll. French have rolled an 8, so they stay in formation. That's it, that's the end of turn 13, apart from the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, so good advantage to the French, they get six dice, uh, they get the advantage of assistance of attacking with a LAN, um, and that knocks out their pre-existing casualties, so they should have five, five dice milling with a LAN, uh, takes them up to six, and then they lose one for four casualties. Um, yeah, So they cause two casualties on the Dutch. Dutch get three dice, they start with five, they get one more, uh, six for being a large battalion. Um, they get, lose one for being unformed, that takes them down to four, lose two for two casualties, that takes them down to three, and turn to, down to three. Um, so, I think that's it. Oh, morale grade. There's also an extra dice for the French because they've got a bonus for the morale grade. So the uh, Allies only cause one casualty and we'll roll the bonus die for the French. That's three. So the French have one by three. Let's see what happens. Okay, some fairly key rolls here. We're on turn 14. Only uh, three more turns to go in this phase of the game. Uh, and that fourth test will be vital for the survival of the defence of Papillot. Let's roll for ADCs. I uh, should have videoed that, but the Allies have no ADCs, the French have two ADCs, so uh, they can't allocate an ADC to their faltering brigade, so it will savoir keep her, uh, and uh, the road to Papillot will be open this turn. Alright, let's see if the French can activate, we'll just put straight re-rolls on their battalions. The right-hand brigade is active, and the left-hand brigade is also active. Okay, and then let's roll for initiative. Uh, the other Nassau Brigade is inactive, so the Allies are at minus one. And the Allies do hold initiative, though. So against victory conditions for the first part of this scenario, it's looking pretty good for the Hench. They now occupy La Haye. We've got a battalion that's uh, evicted the Dutch Belgians from the woods uh, on the edge of Papillot. They'll probably start withdrawing to a more defensible position. They've got a battalion in reserve and a battalion occupying Papillot now. We'll just do the last three turns of this phase of the game and we'll just concentrate on this one brigade assaulting the Nassau line, see if they can break the Nassau here. All right, on we go with turn 13. Um, all right, I think both French brigades were active from memory, so we'll do French movement on this flank. 
Okay, so the Allies have initiative, so they'll fire first. First we'll fire with their skirmishers against the French skirmish screen. That causes no casualties. Then we'll fire their batter battery on the hill at effective range against the closest French infantry battalion. That's a seven. Sorry, that's an eight. They've only taken two casualties, so that's a normal effect. Uh, effective range uh, is two casualties against the French. All right, and then the French, who've taken two casualties, will fire back uh, with their skirmish screen against the Nassau skirmishers, and they cause one casualty on the Nassau skirmishers. Okay, turn 15, rolling for ADCs, two for the French. They get one for the Allies, they get one. The Allies will go for a reroll. They are active. The French attacking brigade is active. All right, let's roll for initiative. Allies uh, so are plus one. Uh, allies get initiative, All right. Uh, French uh, may do some charging, we'll see. We'll uh, see if those French columns want to clear away those uh, Nassau skirmishes. Okay, so we've done charges and movement, and the uh, Nassau line is preparing to receive a charge. The French uh, column, one of the columns moved forward and charged. It doesn't have any French assault or officer so can only attack as one of these four columns, and the other three moved up in the movement phase. Uh, so the Nassau skirmishers passed their discipline test and fell back behind their own line. So we'll now get a Nassau volley against the lead French battalion. Let's see how they do. This will be a standard volley. A five, that won't do very much. That'll be just one casualty against the French. Takes that battalion up to five casualties. And then the uh, Dutch-Belgian artillery will fire against uh, this battalion down here. As it's uh, got at least a chance of not sitting its own troops. It's a seven. That effective range is just one casualty against that battalion. All right, that's it for turn 15. Turn 16, this is the last chance for the French to break the Nassau. It's clearly feeling tough for the Allies on this part of Waterloo Ridge. So on turn 16, the Allies have gone hesitant that a French brigade is indeed active and charges will be declared. What we're actually gonna do is charge in with one of the battalions uh, in the in the rear, uh, one of the ones who hasn't taken any casualties, um, just to give it the maximum chance of uh, charging home against the uh, Nassau. Okay, so against the Nassau, the French have gone in against the left-hand side of the line. Nassau, my view of the French column, is coming up to attack it. Right, we'll do their defensive volley. So this will be a standard volley. Yay! They will hold off, I'm sure. They've done five casualties and a discipline test against the French. The French wants to test at minus one. They will charge home. That's a lot of casualties to take. That won't help their charge result. Okay, and we'll do the destiny test for the double six. That's a 10. Okay, unsightly demise. So uh, the general for the French has been lost as well. Um, he was sabred by the dueling champion of the Nassau and the French brigade falters. And so uh, I don't believe they will charge home. Wow, that was a great climax. Double six on the last turn of the game. The Nassau uh, battalions holding off the French assault against Papillot. Uh, the French brigade falling back with the loss of their brigadier. At the same time, we see the rest of Dalon's attack starting to withdraw from the Allied ridge line. Uh, the Nassau, however, may see their position here as untenable, as the French still hold Papillot and be able to uh, produce some flanking fire. So I expect the Nassau line will, will withdraw back up to the ridge crest rather than being down in the valley, uh, in, the villi in, the, in the valley of La Haye and Papillot. So that was uh, our uh, first game. Hope you all enjoyed it. A uh, nice little Christmas bonus game. And uh, we'll be back with the Prussian counterattack in a little while.